Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with low and slow prime rib. That's right, I'm gonna show you the simplest, easiest, most fail-safe method ever invented for cooking prime rib. And yes, that includes our famous Method X. So if you overcooked an expensive prime rib years ago and are still traumatized, this is gonna get you back in the game. And by the way, this is not a recipe, it's simply a technique and it will work no matter how you decide you want to flavor this meat. And to get started, the first thing we'll need is a prime rib, also known as a standing rib roast. And this one here was just under five pounds and has two bones, which I almost always leave on when I roast it, unless I'm gonna use them to make a gravy or sauce ahead of time, which I did here to film the previous video, which was called Prime Rib Gravy. And if you haven't seen that, you should definitely check it out. But anyway, like I said, I usually leave those on but the good news is this method will work whether you're using a boneless roast or a bone-in roast. Does not matter. Okay, so if you're wondering what happens to those bones, you can check out the prime rib gravy video. But this one's all about how to roast this piece of meat. So what we'll do is transfer that onto a tray or plate, and then we'll salt it fairly generously on all the surfaces. And once that's set, it brings us to an optional step, which is popping this in the fridge uncovered for a day or two to sort of dry out a little bit which I believe improves the texture and helps the flavor. And yes, I will remove that little piece of fat because it's bugging you. And then before we do pop this in the fridge, I like to put it up on some kind of rack. And if you don't have one, you could just twist up some aluminum foil and just bend it like I've done here, and that will totally work. And by work, I mean it will let air circulate underneath. Okay, so I transfer that into the fridge, and then I close the door quickly so you can't figure out what I have in there. And I let that sit in there uncovered for 48 hours, after which it looked like this, which basically looks like a piece of meat that's been in the fridge uncovered for 48 hours. Okay, so that was the first tip slash optional step, which brings us to the next one. And that is we're definitely gonna wanna let this warm up on the counter for a few hours before we roast it. Right, you don't have to, but it will cook more evenly if you do, so please do. But either way, once we're ready to roast, we will transfer that to our roasting pan, which hopefully has a rack in it, but if it doesn't, just do that foil trick again. And then at this point, we'll go ahead and season this up any which way we want, which for me just means mixing some butter with some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and some cayenne. And I went ahead and stirred that together before smearing it all over my meat. Oh, and a quick reminder, this is not a recipe, but rather a technique. So please feel free to add any herbs or spices you want. I mean, you are after all the chief of what's in the butter you smear on your beef. And really, the only mandatory ingredient would be the salt. But besides that, add whatever you want. Oh, and do yourself a favor and make sure your butter is super soft. All right, I thought this was fine. But once I started to smear it on, I realized it was a little too cold. And it was sort of clumping up and crumbling. So I stopped and scraped it off and heated it in the microwave for like two seconds. Which made it way more spreadable and significantly less annoying. Which reminds me, you can also just paint on melted butter and then season the outside which is what I probably should have done in the first place. But anyway, the point is you flavor your prime rib as you see fit, whether that includes melted butter, whole butter, or no butter. But don't be shy with the salt. All right, this is a giant hunk of meat. So it might look like it, but we are not putting too much salt on this. And then once that's set, before this goes in the oven, I like to add a big splash of water to the pan to keep our oven nice and humid. And that's it. This is now ready to transfer into the center of a 300 degree oven for about two hours if your prime rib is the same size, or until it looks like this, and the internal temp is between 115 and 120. If that is, you want the classic rosy pink finish, which is somewhere between rare and medium rare, and we will absolutely 100% of the time check with a probe thermometer. And once we've verified our target temp, we will cover this in foil, and we will let it rest at least 20 minutes, during which time that internal temp will go up between five and 10 degrees. And believe it or not, that's it. So I wasn't kidding, a super simple method with just one temperature setting. All right, I know there's methods where you start at 500 and then turn it down to get a little deeper sear on the surface, but according to recent made up studies, 25% of people will forget to do that. And that number jumps up to 87% if they've been drinking. So we're just going 300 the whole time. And that's it, once that's finished resting, we can transfer it onto a cutting board and we can go ahead and slice in. But before we do, let me give you a possibly unnecessary reminder. Do not forget to put that roasting pan on the stove and pour in a splash of water or beef broth or wine or a combination 
And then we'll put our heat on about medium to medium high. And then using some kind of spatula or spoon, we will scrape all that amazing goodness off the bottom. And then we can serve those juices right alongside our meat. Or if we want, add them to our gravy. All right, anything's appropriate, except not using them. And for more detailed info, go ahead and search for the video where we actually did au jus. But that's basically it. And we can now return to the cutting board, where I'm going to take a knife and cut in to see how we did. And if everything goes according to plan, the inside should be hot and steamy and extremely juicy, and we should have a gorgeous rosy pink color that looks just like a magazine cover. Except those are photoshopped, and this is not. And because we let our meat warm up a little bit, and we cooked it just at 300 degrees the whole way, whatever shade of pink we're going for should be pretty much uniform from the surface all the way to the center. All right, what we don't want is it well done for the first few inches and then rare in the center, and with this method, you don't have to worry about that. And sure, it looks magnificent, but what did it taste like? Well, my friends, it tasted like beautifully seasoned, perfectly cooked prime rib. Okay, tender, juicy, and flavorful, which are pretty much the top three things on our checklist. So I could not have been happier with how this came out. And that is just eating off the cutting board, with no side dishes or au jus or gravy. So I did go ahead and play one up properly. And normally it would be a sin to cover up something this beautiful with a sauce. But when that sauce is our famous prime rib gravy, it's okay. Let's go ahead and pour plenty of that over the top before we tuck in. And of course, if you don't like yours this rare, just simply cook it longer and pull it out at 120 or 125 instead. And you'll have something closer between medium rare and medium. But beyond that, I can't help you. I will never understand people paying for prime rib than cooking it well done. But anyway, I shouldn't judge in front of you. But if you do enjoy fully cooked beef, I would probably just go with a pot roast. It's going to be less expensive and not as dry. Oh, and in case you're wondering, next to those prop Brussels sprouts, that is a little something we call Duchess potatoes, which I'm hoping to show you in an upcoming video, since that is becoming a lost art. And lost art is the worst art. But no matter what side dishes you go with, I think you're going to love this easy method. So to recap, We'll want to let our meat sit in the fridge uncovered for a couple days, and then we'll let it warm up for a few hours before roasting, and then we will season it generously before roasting it low and slow at 300, and then finally we'll let it rest for 20 minutes covered before we slice in. And if you do all that, you will have this, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.